Hey guys, for today's video, I really just wanted to talk about a really fascinating topic. I'm comparing the three different RTSs that I've played recently, Warcraft 3, Age of Empires 4, and Starcraft 2, specifically about the topic of pacing. Which game is faster? Which battle, uh, which game is faster in battles? Which game is faster in the macro? What about the emphasis on micro macro? These are really interesting topics that help me by talking about them to better understand what makes a good RTS, what makes an RTS and more. The first part of this video, I'm going to have some thoughts summed up for you that I've been thinking about for quite a long time and that I wanted to discuss with you guys here on YouTube and with people on Twitch. So I'm looking forward to your feedback and I'll be reading every single comment on this video. The second part of the video is a Q&A with Twitch chat where they can ask anything, mostly in regards to the topic at hand, but also a, a wide variety of other topics. And we'll go into detail in answering each of these. I think it became a really fun video. No gameplay in this one, but there'll be gameplay every day as well and uh yeah sometimes i want to have a nice discussion hope you enjoy it have a great time with the video uh, but recently i've been uh playing all of these games warcraft 3 and sc2 as former professional uh, gamer uh, playing tournaments age of empires 4 just went into beta a couple of days ago in the weekend of 19 september Today is the 22nd of September. So it uh, it led me to th do a lot of thinking about what RTSs represent. And they represent different things to everyone. RTS is uh, probably a genre that had its golden age somewhere between 1998 and 2012. In this period of time, the real five headers were playing games uh, to be challenged and not to be distracted for half an hour. And RTSs challenge you, they are replayable. They follow the formula of game development that focused on gameplay first, that focused on creating long-term loyalists of your game company. And by selling a game once for 60 euros, but maybe having that customer be loyal to your game and to your company for I think the most that they could hope for is five to 10 years. They couldn't have expected it was gonna be 20 years or uh, 10 years or three days. And they couldn't have expected that it could last that long. But the steps that led to it was very much long-term support, creating it from the ground up to be really good, having talented people thinking everything over a million times, not being afraid to make big changes during development and delaying the game until it's done. There were many different companies creating excellent RTSs at the turn of the millennium. Command and Conquer, Age of Empires, the Warcraft series, the Starcraft series, uh, and many others. But some have stood the test of time better, at least in the optics of Twitch viewership, of tournament play, of esports, of competitive gamers, Rise of Nations. And there's a lot of good niche ones as well, or that may have had big commercial success, but that haven't endured the test of time and become replayable and been played in tournaments. Warcraft 3 has, despite Reforged's failed landing because of many mismanagements, but Warcraft 3, the game itself, is still very much alive and kicking. And the game is being played via the W3 Champions user mod. StarCraft 2 hasn't had a patch for a year, but still has some of the best esports to follow, especially for people that like to follow RTSs. But there's many different ways to do an RTS. And I would like to do a number of discussions coming up in the coming days or weeks, where we discuss a particular topic and which one I like the best, maybe also how they are different. And the first topic that I would like to discuss is pacing. But pacing, I think, is also a, a theme that can be interpreted in many different ways. When I think of Warcraft 3 and I think of the pacing, here is my mental picture of it. In a game of one-on-one, -on -one, which is the standard format for competitive games, you do two minutes of isolated build order that has nothing to do with your opponent. You can neither scout 
nor react to the information if you would be able to scout in those first two minutes. You make an individual decision that doesn't interact with your opponent, that actually has you choose one of your three main heroes and your opening unit route without knowing what your opponent is going to be going for. Soon afterwards, within 40 seconds, 2 minutes and 40 seconds game time, you can see what your opponent is doing, but it's not early enough to change your first hero, it's not possible, nor to change your first unit type, usually. And there are some exceptions where this is possible, for the unit type at least. So from 2 minutes 40, you start to interact, and you end up having a game that is going to be roughly 8 minutes to 20 minutes in game length, with the average perhaps being around 12 to 18 minutes, maybe 14 minutes or so. That is the pace of a Warcraft 3 game. In a Warcraft 3 game, you could be fighting for practically 15 minutes straight, even 20, with almost never losing contact with your opponent, constantly skirmishing with some of the more aggressive all-ins. But it's also possible that for the first five minutes, you do scout and feel each other out, but you don't do any all-out assaults, nor can you even interact much with the workers of your opponent. And again, there are a few exceptions. Undead versus human comes to mind, where peasants will be attacked. Orc versus human, there'll be some peasant targeting. But in the orc versus undead matchup, or many matchups with elf, people don't harass each other's workers that much, or there are ways to prevent it and be a little safer. So it is possible for five minutes to kind of do your own thing with some information. And while a higher APM is useful, and sometimes even required to attain the highest levels of skill, an APM of 150 can almost do everything that is important and efficient. Warcraft 3's difficulty level, which is another topic by itself, mostly characterizes itself by the depth of decision making. Because Warcraft 3 has a small amount of RNG that can affect the outcome, there are also many different permutations that the way of the way that a game can go. Finding a different combination of items in one game to the next, to even the next 100,000 games on the same map with the same opponent, same matchup, you can have different item permutations all the time between you and your opponent. And because of that, creativity, depth of real understanding, not just rehashing understood patterns and if then reactions you must understand the game on a deeper level to make quality decisions quickly and well to come out ahead the majority of the time so decision making is important speed is but it's not the most important because of this when i think of pacing for warcraft 3 at least i think the game is relatively slowly paced and this is also some of the higher criticisms that some people that never got into warcraft 3 too bad for you have uh, brought forward when they discuss Warcraft 3. Because uh, there will be some creeping where you take out NPCs, neutral play uh, non-player controlled characters, they're called creeps. When you're doing creeping, you're leveling up, it's very much in the vein of an ARPG or an MMORPG. You find efficient ways to take down uh, creeps, level up, get items, get gold, get XP, and then you prep for the final battle. The final battles are not super fast, usually. While it is possible when you meet your opponent on the battlefield in a game of Warcraft 3 to basically have the game be concluded within 10 seconds of the fight, it is very unusual. More usual is 30 seconds minimum, and a fight can take a minute, sometimes even two minutes. The way you can measure this is if a player is attacking and the other is defending, and the attacking player brings towers, and they start building towers with their villagers during the attack, those towers take a minute to complete. And oftentimes they finish and the fight goes on for many minutes more. So minutes long, fi long fights is one of the major love parts of the game, the one of the major uh, favorite parts of the game. Things that Warcraft 3 aficionado fans uh, love to see. So fights can take minutes. Games are on average 15 minutes perhaps. And there are minutes where you don't necessarily interact with your opponent in a direct way. You're just building your own plan of the game as you go around the map in an efficient way with a goal of an ultimate encounter. And sometimes there is a lot of contact. But just saying that it is possible that that doesn't happen 
If I were to have to pace the game of Warcraft 3 in a general, the world of gaming genre type of thing, I'll say Warcraft 3 is a 7 out of 10 in pacing. Maybe, uh, I haven't played all the games, but I would say most FPS are faster paced than an RTS. You need uh, a lot of reaction speed. Uh, you need uh, high refresh rates, the, the perfect sensitivity on your mouse. You peek around the corner and you try to headshot someone. That's faster paced. But then you look at many other games, turn-based games, card games, and Warcraft 3 is faster paced than those. And it's maybe also faster paced than some RTSs. In a fight, things can get really hectic. You try to reposition your units, surround the opponent's unit, block, work against the engine's limitations. The, the pathfinding tries to find a way around a unit and you keep moving that unit so that the pathfinding keeps recalibrating and this is called body blocks. And you want to do that very quickly, but you also want to watch out that your hero doesn't get nuked by your opponent. So there are moments where a lot of speed does matter. And as a former World Championship uh, winner of Warcraft 3, my APM is around 200 to 260 actions per minute. And that is not among the fastest, but it's not the very slowest either, but I'd say it's lower end. And sometimes I, I did feel like, oh yeah, I should be a little bit faster here. And I can ramp that up, even if I didn't naturally gravitate towards it. I think my peak has been 280. But that's enough. That is enough. Now you go to the next game, StarCraft II. StarCraft II was built from the ground up with very different expectations than WarCraft III. WarCraft III was Brood War's successor. Brood War was its predecessor. And it was meant to reinvent the genre of RTS. With heroes, with combination of RTS and RPG elements, it was always going to have a slower pace than Brood War and its required actions. Perhaps it was one of the first RTSs that tried to, and succeeded, to casualize RTS, but accidentally became really deep anyway, with millions and millions of fans around the world that watch esports let alone those that never watched Warcraft 3 esports. So the game was a resounding success. Starcraft 2 was built from the ground up with the goal of esports very much front and center in the mind of its makers, Blizzard Activision. And Starcraft 2 had a game speed that is called normal that never ended up being used for esports. I, I believe shortly before release of the game, they ramped up the standard default game speed for all matchmaking games to faster, which is why all the way until the end of Heart of the Swarm, the game speed of StarCraft II runs faster than the real world clock. So if you're watching a game in Li Wings of Liberty, the first expansion, the first game, or Heart of the Swarm, the second game, which is the first expansion, and you watch the game and it said 26 minutes on the clock, it was more like 19 minutes because they last minute chose to ramp up the game speed in order to make it more skillful, more exciting, quicker, and therefore perhaps more palatable for esports. In the decision that they made there, alongside the decision of the design of many different units that the game has, the StarCraft 2 became a lot faster paced. The, the, the Widow Mine, the Baneling, the Siege Tank, the Colossus, and eventually also the, uh, uh, the Swarm Host and the Lurker and the Disruptor, the High Templar with Psy Storm, all have massive area of effect damage potential. And the unit, of, the unit health is extremely low by comparison. Where fights in Warcraft 3 can take minutes, or you even ask how many minutes or how many tens of minutes, Starcraft 2, it's more of a question of seconds. StarCraft 2 is not less micro-heavy than WarCraft 3. A lot of people think of StarCraft as the macro game and WarCraft 3 as the micro game. But StarCraft 2 is just as micro-heavy, in fact, more so. They have as many units, unique units per faction, per race, that even have abilities as well, just like in WarCraft 3. And while there are no hero units that have three to four abilities each that are incredibly pivotal and important, not counting the mothership, every unit can be microed more optimally to focus a target that has the correct armor type interaction with its damage type, that every unit can do a better dodge on enemy area of effect damage. And as such, 
Starcraft 2 is more micro heavy than Warcraft 3. But a human is imperfect. Their actions limited. Even for the most demigod like players in Starcraft 2 in the pro scene, 400 APM is pushing it. Maybe 500. And there are some inflated numbers in Starcraft 2 if you hold down a button and the keyboard goes rapid fire, that gets added to the actions. If a Zerg morphs 120 links by holding a button for one second, that gets added to the actions. So you're gonna see APM counts during StarCraft II tournaments of five, 600. They're not really octopusing all over the keyboard with their eight arms. But StarCraft II pros are fast. If you wanna be successful, you have to be very fast. And SE2 micro is just as demanding as WarCraft III, if not more, but because there are so many different interests competing for the, the attention of a StarCraft II player, they're not able to bring about all the actions that they would like to for the micro. In fact, if you have to choose between two different desires, do your micro or your macro, oftentimes the better EV expected value is to focus on your macro. Throw away a small hand of units not looking at them because you need to refocus your attention on ramping up your production of buildings and units and then you have a larger army to fight with poorly but a larger army and that's usually better than a small army tightly microed like you would in warcraft 3. one of the geniuses of warcraft 3 is that it stopped its macro development after a certain point in time i'll make 12 workers as orc in warcraft 3 in total the five starting and seven more and i could be done for the rest of the game if i'm not expanding those 12 workers are all I'll ever make. And I'll just have to make a food resource uh, production building every now and then to be able to raise my supply limit and have more units. In StarCraft 2, non-stop macro is required. And it is important. And it is taxing. And it is stressful. And it scares most of the player base in the entire gaming world to undertake to play a game like StarCraft 2. Especially if you have a competitive bone in your body because you'll constantly be shown how inadequate you are. But that's the beauty of it as well, as you try to perfectly improve your processes nonstop in a mathematical way, in a sequential way, constantly trying to build upon what you already are as you make yourself into the perfect weapon in the anvil of defeat, failure, shame, and embarrassment of your entire family. So StarCraft II is a fast game. I think it's a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the RTS genre. Perhaps it's not a 10 out of 10 in the gaming world at large. A 9, perhaps? I do think it's one of the most skillful games ever. Maybe there it's a 10. That is up to debate. Skills for FPS and an RTS are not one-to-one -one comparable. And there are also games like Osu, the music game, where you have to follow the beat, which you have to be incredibly fast for, even though there is no relevant decision-making there. Either you hit the note or you don't. It's very binary. In StarCraft II, Besides all that speed, you need to reserve some small part of your brain for active, critical, human thinking in the one-on-one -on -one deathmatch with your opponent. What is he going to do? What should I do? How could I still win? How could I still lose? And so on and so forth. The StarCraft 2 tries to combine all that. And for many players, you may not have any time left to make conscious decisions because you're so taxed by the mechanics. But if you master the mechanics and make them your autopilot, you can start to delve into that realm as well. StarCraft 2 is a 9 or a 10 in pacing. Warcraft 3 in the gaming world, maybe a 7. In the RTS genre, maybe a 5. You may disagree. Let me know what you think. And now comes to Age of Empires 4, one of the most recent additions to the AAA RTS genre. Uh, a new game that is promising and has been fun to play in the beta and the stress test. Um, but it's only in the beta so far. On the other hand, it comes out soon. Today's the 22nd of September and it comes out October 28th, if it doesn't get delayed. We played the stress test a couple of days ago and I've been doing much thinking about the game. What do I like about it? What do I don't? Well, I found a number of feedback points and i think that's really for another video right now i'd like to discuss pacing of age of empires 4. i get a sense that age of empires 4 is somewhere in between my favorite 4x games 4x meaning 
strategy. Let's call it a turn-based strategy game. It's simpler. It's one. It's like a turn-based strategy game. Even though there are no turns, it just has that feeling. That uh, yeah, it has that feeling, that atmosphere, and it feels like StarCraft II as well. There's four resources to manage in Age of Empires, not counting villagers, army, and buildings. Four resources: wood, stone, uh, food, and gold. Up from the two and the two that these games have. More things to keep track of. You can go up to 120 villagers, if you like. StarCraft II, your worker count can also go up to 120, but it's not very good. I did win a tournament match once with it by accident, because I overmade. But usually you'll target 60, 70, 80 workers in StarCraft, 12 workers in Warcraft. In Age of Empires, you also have 50 to 110 workers. So in that sense, it's fairly similar to StarCraft. Food count can go up to 200, 200, 100. So there's a lot to keep track of. But the damage output for Age of Empires and StarCraft 2 is very different. Whereas in StarCraft 2, 10 Zerklings, the cheapest unit, can ravage a worker line in seconds, or can kill a main town center, a main town hall in eight seconds, 12 seconds, depending on the upgrades and the points in the game. Uh, the same equivalent in Age of Empires would not even make a scratch. It would do maybe 1% or less than 1% of the damage of a town center before they all die to the town center. In Warcraft 3, the equivalent of that, of 10 Zerklings, is like two grunts. It'll take them half the game to take down the opponent's town hall when, not, when ignored and not killed. So Age of Empires has a much slower pace, even though it builds an RTS world on the same scale, on the same epic level of unit count as StarCraft, but it's slower. Damage output is lower and health is higher. Units in Age of Empires have damages of naval warfare can be 50 damage per hit or 100 damage. But on the ground, you'll see damages like 8, 14, 25 damage. And the health pools are 100, 200, 400. So it's slower. In a StarCraft, damage can be 160. Unit health, 80. So you can see how looking away for just a blink in StarCraft 2, your entire army gets destroyed. But in Age of Empires, you can get overwhelmed by a large force of 20 units. You have nothing. You can actually power build barracks, unit production facilities on the spot in another part of your base, crank out units and fend off the invaders. I don't think that's how a pro game would look like in a year, that you would be in such a situation, be able to come back. But I was able to do it <laughs> on ladder so far. So you can see that you don't get overwhelmed the same way like you would in StarCraft 2. So pacing for Age of Empires is lower. What I'm not sure about is uh, which game has b higher pacing, Age of Empires or Warcraft 3. I feel like there is a higher need, definitely, for macro in Age of Empires. So it's higher paced in that sense than Warcraft 3. But when I'm in fights, I don't get the same sense of urgency and m details mattering as in Warcraft 3. So in the macro sense, Age of Empires pacing, if StarCraft is a 10, then Age of Empires is a six. Warcraft for macro is a two. But in battles, Warcraft is a seven. Starcraft is a nine. I think Age of Empires is like a five in battles. So there is a more steady tempo in Age of Empires during battles, during macro. You kind of have the same level of denseness all the time. And that does make it a little bit, little bit less scary. New players might be scared by Warcraft 3's battle micro against veterans. You have a much lower chance as a newbie to beat a Warcraft 3 veteran in any battle, even ones where you're heavily favored numerically. If I am a tournament player and I play against a non-tournament player in Warcraft 3, I could win battles where I'm not favored by 1 to 10 ratio just because I don't take the battle or I run circles around them, or I can block them out from reaching my key targets. But in StarCraft 2, if I have a force that's 40% weaker than my opponent, no matter how well I micro, I'm probably gonna lose that battle. And that is interesting, because that 
means that the fight itself, what you do in the fight, is a little bit less important as what you bring to the fight. In Age of Empires, there is a pretty big influence by micro in how you can affect a battle. But it is not as high as Warcraft. So the pacing of, War of Age of Empires battles feels like a 6 to me as well. 5 or 6 or so. So that's, uh, that's my thoughts so far on the pacing of the game. I would just want to end on my feeling about Age of Empires 4 so far. And uh, maybe lead into a next video I can do about the game. Because I think it's interesting to talk about what I liked about it. And what I think still can need improvement. But most of all my feelings are I'm very excited that a new AAA RTS is coming out. That people seem very excited about. I've noticed that in the amount of people checking out the game on my channel, on YouTube, or on Twitch. And I'm definitely going to play it during the launch of October 28th as well. Maybe even add it to my schedule long term. I typically don't plan a, more than a week or two in advance. I really see what do I find fun, what do you guys find captivating, and make a nice schedule about it in that way. You can always find that on twitch.tv slash followgravy in the about section below the video player. There's a schedule there. You can always see when I'm going to play the next seven days. So I'm going to play it and I'm excited about it. And it's not perfect yet. The biggest gripes may be some of the parts of the control scheme, individual unit selection, some accuracy of clicks on the battleground, trying to click a sheep or a tree that has been felled can be difficult. And there's, some, there's a few other things as well. I'm not too concerned about game balance. This changes a lot. Both these games benefited from years of patching. And if it gets the same treatment by the developer, then there should be no concern if they listen to feedback. Overall, I enjoyed playing the game a lot. I am new to the franchise. I didn't play Age of Empires 2 more than a few games after it was remastered for the second time. I didn't play it way back when. So there has been a lot to learn. And it, it does feel uncomfortable sometimes, I have to admit to you, to play an RTS, which people think like, some people think I'm just automatically gonna be great at it because I'm like an RTS champion player in Warcraft 3 and I was really good in Starcraft 2, but not as good in Warcraft 3. And then I play Age of Empires 4, it's like, oh, you're, you're gonna be top of the ladder in no time. And it can feel scary when that's not the case. And, you know, I haven't played it as much yet, but I'm new to it. There's a lot of concepts to learn, but I learned it with uh, with Gusto. I try to consume a lot of information about that, and I'm thinking about it a lot. But I'm going to need more games to get used to the game. And we'll do that. We'll do that uh, at the end of next month. That's uh, all I wanted to say so far about the pacing. Hope you enjoyed this, and leave comments what topics you'd like to hear about next, about any of these games. We can discuss them. And now I'd like to open it for Q&A with Twitch chat. I didn't read any of this. Now I can do some Q&A and maybe have some uh, points you want to add to the discussion. Don't say by YouTube. We may add it to the, to the YouTube video. <laughs> can you do a take on Age of Empires 4 graphics art style? I think the style is fantasy medieval. This is a good style that works. It's safe. I like it. The clarity for some units, distinction between a spearman and a footman and a man at arms, and the difference between a horseman and a scout and a heavy cavalry, that could be better. Units in Age of Empires are very small, and that makes it hard to see or click sometimes. In your opinion, is Age of Empires 4 worth the 60 euros? This is hard to say for me now, Wimmerino. I would not pre-purchase it because of what happened with Reforged. I'm now relatively skeptical towards pre-purchasing. Age of Empires 4 also announced that they are not going to have ranked when the game releases. This is a mode that should be part of a game that releases and won't be. I heard it on rumor that it could take a year till they add it. Warcraft Reforged also said that there's no rank on release and that they'll add it later. They lied. Hopefully Age of Empires 4 didn't lie and wouldn't lie.
but it is not impossible. So if you like ranked, or if you want to see more about the campaign, or if you want certain bugs or UI things fixed, you can also wait. You can always look at me playing it on my channel when the game comes out to make your decision. Which of these games, asks CureTake, is easiest to the eye from the perspective of the audience? Which is most fun to watch? I think StarCraft 2 was designed with the audience in mind more than Warcraft 3. From my experience and talking to people, people generally start watching StarCraft 2 a little easier than Warcraft 3. We have a lot of magic, heroes and auras here that require knowledge to know what they do. And while StarCraft 2 also has a lot of units that have special abilities, like Dark Swarm, it has a different name, uh, Interference, Matrix, because of the design of the animation, you can usually tell whether it's good or bad. And because it's a numbers game, you can usually tell whether one player or the other is winning. And even if you don't know who's winning, you can still see a lot of action all the time. And that's what StarCraft 2 did well. In that sense, it's a bit easier to follow for someone's girlfriend that never watches games or someone's boyfriend that never watches games. Age of Empires 4 is vast. There is not one super concentrated place of attention. And that could be a challenge when it comes to having an excited audience follow a match of esports. At any time, there could be skirmishes on many different fronts. And you have an observer panning around the map looking for relevant things to focus on. And Warcraft 3 can feel slow paced for some observers. I enjoy the anticipation as people build an arms race into an eventual confrontation. I understand when different uh, subtleties are happening, how they will affect the final outcome. And that's exciting. P Warcraft fans of this channel and other channels, they they love that part about it, but some people think Warcraft is a little slow. Age of Empires will also feel slower than Starcraft 2. Some people think Age of Empires 4 should have been more revolutionary. Come up with a lot of new different concepts. It is too safe, too much like Age of Empires 2. What's the difference? But that safety makes it still an RTS. Make it less safe and wildly reinvent the wheel and remove resources so you only fight and you don't have a true RTS anymore. Not sure it should be called one. And you have people like me not being as interested in it. It is a challenging genre and it will never be as big as a Fortnite or if there's justice in the world, it will be. But um, I think it's important that this genre exists. It's fun and challenging and replayable. How do you keep your hair so voluminous off topic? I just want to say ding ding. Uh, Jay Dalryok, do you have an opinion comment on how area of effect is based on four different resources spread across the map? Oh, how Age of Empires is based on four different resources spread across the map versus the way that Starcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 have a nucleus base all in one area. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. It leads to proxy wars. It's the best way to secure proxy wars. People fight over reasons. In HOTS, Heroes of the Storm, you fight over merc camps and objectives and buildings and minion waves. But you also sometimes fight for no reason and we call those stupid brawls. In Warcraft 3, you fight over creep camps, positioning, access to doodads like merc camp, goblin shop, killing each other, these are the reasons to fight and maps are relatively small so having random fights is a little bit rare in starcraft 2 you fight over expansions harassing each other's workers and the multitudinous different bases that you have and you fight over positioning a lot creating a, a sphere of influence but in age of empires you fight over resources everywhere on the sea different places and that is different Age of Empires 2 had this as well. Age of Empires 4 continues it. And I think that's really interesting. And I'm looking forward to having those kind of proxy wars. Some arches here, some horsemen there. Thanks for the sub, Virvelwind. Atlas asks, what are your thoughts on the camera distance in Age of Empires 4? And should it be pulled back further? Well, you can zoom out a bit at the start of every game. I think it should start fully zoomed out. 
it's annoying every game in the stress test i had to zoom out and sometimes i forgot their units are already very hard to click my guess is that developers tried to zoom out more and found it even harder to click my guess is also that devs know that trees and sheep are hard to click but that they're being rushed to release the game anyway and that maybe it's hard to change it many units need to fit on the screen this is a common feedback from people that sh trees and sheep are hard to click and units and yet here we are there was even a comment from a dev that said you can't play the game that way on the forums of age of empires when people asked for it to be zoomed out more you think you want it but you don't <coughs> so the question is should it zoom out more um i don't know i've played zoomed in for a long time in warcraft and it finally zoomed out more thanks to the user mods of w3 champions i found it okay just pan more around the map Did you try all eight factions in Age of Empires 4? No, only four were playable when I played, and I only tried those four. Save Orcas. Is there a big difference between units of each faction? So to give an example, one race will have, a, like most races will have a crossbowman, a ranged unit that do, does bonus damage to cavalry. But then the Chinese have a Zugen Nu, which is a unit like the crossbowman, but he sacrifices bonus damage to cavalry and instead just has a greater rate of fire. That is one of the unique distinctions. And another race will have a spearman, a spikeman, a pikeman that does. Many races have a pikeman, bonus damage to cavalry, but melee, unlike the crossbowman. And uh, one of them can get double range of what he already has. So these are some uh, differences. You don't have units as distinctly different as in StarCraft. You're looking at different macro mechanics and some changes in units, but the races aren't as different as in StarCraft, where one has a lurker that burrows and does line AOE damage and another shoots out a shade of itself that explodes on enemies like the Disruptor. Those are quite different indeed. Different ways of dealing with the same thing, both anti-ground both devastating, but very different shapes. Legos. Yeah, so I'll play more Warcraft 3 today. Just uh, Q&A. Do you think any major changes, asks Raptor0719, need to be made based on what you played for Age of Empires 4? Or is the foundation solid? Yes, major changes need to be made to some things. If I select eight horsemen, and more on this in a later video, okay? When I... Uh, for Age of Empires 4, because I've got more to say. But when I select eight horsemen on the screen, I box click. There's no quick way to release two horsemen from the group and send them somewhere. In Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2, you have a HUD uh, uh, below the screen panel that shows eight horsemen pictograms with their health and their mana pool if they have one, but Age of Empires doesn't have. You see eight pictograms, and you can shift click two horses out of it send them somewhere and reform your six horsemen group control group one but age of empires 4 doesn't have pictograms there's just one pictogram of horsemen with the number eight on it this is a very clean ui small ui a lot of space for the battleground pretty console like 2021 ready but there's no way to control any of my individual horsemen safe panning to them on the map and finding their their body on the map and then shift deselecting them if my eight horsemen are in eight different corners in the world i would need to go top left deselect horsemen pan top right deselect horsemen reform my group i can't randomly remove two based on their pictograms and that is uh, just one of the issues you can overcome the issue but it exists right now it's not hard to add it, but they would need to make a decision to, to make a less pretty, less clean, less simplified UI. No ranked on release, but there will be matchmaking. You will meet players in Age of Empires 4 of your own strength, but there will not be a ranked list with 
rank uh, definitions like master and stuff. How do you feel about replayability between the three? Which game do you think it would be faster to pick up and have a good feel to enjoy the game and be a decent player? Asks Palatial GG. StarCraft 2 has many different game modes. Custom games, user-made maps and Blizzard-made maps. Fun little tower defense modes. You can play very poorly and find people because StarCraft 2 still has noobs. Warcraft 3 almost has no noobs anymore. There's, there's still some, but not as many. StarCraft 2 has a bigger layer of matchmaking slice, I think. So you can be really bad and have fun games and flame each other for the other race being overpowered. And then there's co-op, which you can play together against AI. There's the campaign that is more up to date and more playable in a sense than Warcraft's campaign. I think Starcraft 2 is easier to pick up than Warcraft 3 and to get a feel for the game as well. Warcraft 3 has so much knowledge requirement that it's hard to learn these days, despite my best intents to teach the game to people. Age of Empires 4, I found there's a lot of information hidden from me. If you're an Age of Empires 2 player, you'll intuit many of the features and intuit many of the mechanics and learn what you didn't know easily. But as someone that never played it, I've had people tell me, well, you can click farms on your town hall and they'll automatically build around it in the nearest spot. Or you, and there's many hotkeys to learn as well that are different from how Blizzard RTSs are. Well, nobody said you have to copy Blizzard's control scheme, but it does help if you take their best practices and add familiarity there in order to steal their fans of their games. So I'd say StarCraft 2 is the easiest to pick up. Then it really depends on your experience before that. But I think Warcraft 3 is simpler and Age of Empires 3 is the most convoluted and uh, complicated. Might be my bias. Which of these games would you say is more forgiving for someone who's learning this game format? Okay, that's roughly the same question. Thanks for the sub, Pixie Dust. Where do you draw the borders of the genre? You mentioned resources, anything else? An RTS is still an RTS if you have resource management, base management, unit production, and combat with micro. Once you remove relevance of micro from the battle, that even if you practice a lot, you can barely improve the outcome of a battle compared to automatic resolution, then it's not really an RTS battle anymore. If you can pause battles, it's not really an RTS anymore. Like in Total War Warhammer, you can pause battles, except at the highest difficulty level. So I guess they kind of go for a mix between the two. But I don't think most people call Total War Warhammer an RTS because kingdom management is turn-based. So it has to be real time. Yeah, those are kind of the requirements. There are some games that try to dispense with some of the features of an RTS, uh, remove base management and say, we're gonna automatically train your workers. We're gonna automatically put them to work. There is a cap, you'll reach the cap soon. Like Immortal Gates of Pyre. And then you just micro. But I even didn't find the micro as engaging as in Warcraft 3. So I don't know what I was left with in that game. <coughs> Have you ever played a multiplayer game of Civ? I haven't, but I have played... Well, yes, I have. Civilization 2. Uh, last millennium with my brothers when we were kids. And I've played other 4X games multiplayer. Like uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall. Fantastic game. Absolutely. Did somebody say September? Sorry, just wanted to intrude on this video. Yo, thanks, Monkey Ninja. You're a ninja, but I saw you. It also feels very flavorful for competing empires to battle over natural resources all over the place, says Paul Mjolja. Yeah, I like it. What are your thoughts on the randomly generated maps that follow styles and, and versus playing the same maps over and over like in Warcraft 3 SE2? You know, I actually didn't know that until I read about it later. <laughs> I thought I just kept playing on different maps, Zodeling, in Age of Empires. <laughs> I read about that today. It's like the random procedurally generated maps sometimes put too many resources in one place. Three gold mines for the opponent and only one for me. I'm like, oh, 
it's randomly generated. You know, that is very along the lines of uh, 4X games, like Planetfall, Age of Wonders. And I'm okay with that, but it's not balanced. I'm okay with that for ladder. But if you want to create esports, and I have no idea if they want to create esports around it, I'm assuming yes, but I don't know. Or if they're going to just open it up for a third party to do, uh, to do um, esports as they wish, either multiple or a singular one, and how they want to run it. Because I think you need fixed maps. There's always fans that say, no, nah, just throw to the wolves run the maps all the time, test players on their uh, flexibility. But when you do that, the level of play will be much lower. The variance will be higher. You'll create fewer stars because good players can just get messed up by a bad map and so on and so forth. Don't feel pressure about being, not being the best in Age of Empires 4. We're not here watching you because you're the best player of all times. We're here, of course, because you're good, but also because you're very pleasing to watch and learn while you're learning. Thanks, uh, Pafelex. You're not the first to say it, and I'm still not sure I believe it, but because I get competitive, I'm like, I should be better at this, but thanks. So, for example, Majesty wouldn't be an RTS by your definition because it has base management, resource management, unit production, but no unit micro. Well, that's a Line Wars, isn't it? If you look at Line Wars custom games in uh, Warcraft, I don't know what Majesty is, by the way. But for, for instance, Clash Royale on mobile or Line Wars in uh, Warcraft. You make units, you place them, you have resource management, either mana in Clash or in Warcraft, maybe other types of resources, but you don't control the units. That's not an RTS, correct. When was the last time you played Immortal Gates of Pirate? There's been a lot of new stuff. Um, a year ago, maybe. So maybe it's outdated by now. Did you play Paradox strategy games? No, but I could have in a different dimension, you know, if I hadn't been RTS Pro Gaming. I didn't look at Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth, so I don't know who they, how they did their uh, resource gathering. And I don't know if Age of Empires 4 is going to have profiles on release or or not. Like reforged or not like reforged. Okay, that was uh, really cool. Let's see if we can uh, find some more games in uh, Warcraft. Good talk. <laughs> 